Hey, let me try and turn my microphone on and see if that actually works. <laughs> uh, welcome to my OCS, uh, my uh, Gemp Game Review Series. I'm Chris Gogol, and this is episode 29. Um, just got back from the World Championships, where you can find all the videos. They're still on Twitch. Uh, they'll get moved over to YouTube in a couple of days, but they, uh, they are still available to watch on Twitch. You can just go right here to the Videos tab uh, and then pull them all up. And uh, I was starting to try and watch some of these uh, this afternoon when I had a little little time or at least in the background while I was uh, working uh, great time at the world championships I'm gonna close this out before it uh, lags out my computer um, thank you very much to everybody involved in organizing the event from choosing the, the location of the hotel to you know Kim who ran the event Jerry who you know did all the streaming with uh, Jan doing some of the commentary and stuff with him uh, Jeremy was doing a lot of work getting the equipment and stuff set up. Um, Gurgal was there doing all the uh, rulings and stuff on Saturday and, and even on Sunday morning uh, with a little help out from Aglets, Tim Simon, who was also there uh, playing in his first event in a number of years. He's been behind the scenes doing all the rulings, hasn't really had a lot of time uh, to step out and play, so it was great to see him on uh, at a card table and not behind the, uh, the judges' table. Um, I know there's people I'm forgetting. Now, Brian, who's there, of course. Brian's never played a game of Star Wars. Uh, but Brian is a friend of Scott's who shows up at some of our events in New Jersey and really helps with a lot of just basic logistic coordinating stuff, making sure results get entered into the software, you know, checking with the hotel staff if there's something we need uh, for the room, if there's cables or, if, you know, if the Wi-Fi is not working right. He's the guy who handles, he just does whatever's needed. He just, you know, we give him a task and he gets it done. Uh, so special thank you to him. Uh, of course, all the advocates that were there, which was pretty much all of them, except one. There was only one advocate who wasn't there. Uh, and I'm sure he was pretty broken up about it. We, uh, we, we teased him a little bit. I know uh, Kim kept sending him pictures of all of us hanging around, having a few drinks, playing cards and stuff late at night. And uh, I'm sure he was very uh, happy to be getting all those messages. Luckily for him, it was only like 9 or 10 o'clock. Uh, his time, but uh, yeah, it was like 1, 2 a.m. for uh, for all of us, which is usually when all the interesting stuff happens. Um, I had a blast, had a great time as always. Uh, definitely, you know, wish things had gone a little bit different for me. I probably do, uh, you know, I like to do a tournament report of some type, uh, but I know it would be incredibly long, and whether I want to break it into parts or whether I want to do like a video thing where I just talk about it for, you know, a half hour, uh, we'll we'll see about that. Um, but of course, as we announced last week, uh, you know, the, uh, the sad passing of John Anderson was certainly something that, uh, you know, weighed on, weighed on everyone's minds a little bit throughout the event. And, uh, the, the players committee did announce that they are doing a special donation thing. Um, they're collecting donations. We're going to probably do this through Wednesday, uh, here on the forums, um, We'll be making a donation in John's name to a leukemia-based charity, which is what John passed away from. Uh, and the Players Committee is going to match donations up to $500. Uh, we actually hit the $500 goal this morning, thanks to a lot of donations from the players. Uh, some of them donated their world championship winnings. Some of them donated their travel vouchers that, the, in lieu of accepting the cash or being it, they just redirected the money uh, back to this cause. Um, so thank you to everybody who's donated so far. Absolutely amazing, and we will continue to do this for the next couple of days. Um, obviously, we want to get something to John's family before the services later this week and let them know you know, uh, what we were able to raise and what we'll be donating in his name and uh, you know, exactly which charity it will be. Uh, we're still working on the logistics of that. Uh, you know, we're trying to figure out some of where you know, some of John's treatments were at a university. Can we make a donation there? It would go to good use. Um, just exactly which charity, because we obviously we want to make sure that the money's put to the good use, and it's not one of these charities that just uh, you know inflates their costs and expenses and things like that, and pads everybody's salaries, and only like 40% of the actual donation goes to what it says it's going to be. Um, and I'm sure we'll do some uh, trying to do our best to vet the charity, make sure that the money you know is going where it's supposed to be, which is to help the people who need it, to help the research, uh, to help the patients who are dealing with the illness. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, what else did I have to talk about? Oh, 
one of the other things we also got to hand out at Worlds. Uh, since Kevin couldn't be here, in, couldn't be there in person due to some unforeseen circumstances uh, in the UK, uh, I had to find a new team partner. Thank you to Cohen from the Netherlands for stepping up and uh, or Kuhn, sorry, from stepping up and uh, and being my partner for that event. I didn't quite live up to expectations on my end. Uh, well, because I was playing light side, and all I played against was agents decks all day. Um, but I uh, appreciate him stepping up in Kevin's absence. And uh, But Kevin did send over the uh, September OCS foils, which some of you have already received. It is Supreme Leader Snoke. We'll pass that along right there. Try and, there we go. Less glare. Uh, Supreme Leader Snoke, which was pretty awesome and pretty well received by everyone. Uh, and then there was some talk about, you know, doing sort of like perfect attendance kind of thing. Um, there were only 10 people who played all 96 games, so that seemed a little short. Uh, right now, um, the foil that was given out for the special bonus is a General Kenobi foil slip. Um... Right now, I've set the cutoff for these at everyone who played at least 90 games. If once I get through those players, I'll count, see how many I have left, and then see if I'm able to uh, to move the line a little bit uh, and try and include a few more people and pass them out a little further down. I will not be passing these out to anybody who did not play at least 80 games. Um, because that would be 10 games a month, which would be the cutoff to get an OCS foil to begin with. So if you didn't play at least 80 games, uh, it's highly, highly unlikely that you will not receive the General Kenobi foil slip. Um, it's always possible they might be handed out again some other time in the future, um, but it won't be anytime soon that, uh, that those foils will be handed out. Thank you, Kevin, for getting those to Chris Menzel uh, and to Chris for bringing them over from Europe and handing those off to me. It was a fair trade for all the stuff you sent to my house via Amazon um, that I brought to the tournament for you to bring back to Europe with you. Um, and one of the other things that uh, somebody at the World Championships gave me was something that the Euros like to hand out at their events. They make these little packs where they put little foil virtual slips in. And someone passed one along to me. Now, uh, not exactly going to show you guys the cards that are in there for a certain specific reasons, but <laughs> I am going to open it, and you can see the reaction on my face as I look at all these awesome cards. So, we've got awesome, awesome virtual slips of Corn Horn and Rogue 9, <laughs> Image of the Dark Lord, Stolen First Order TIE Fighter, Kylo Ren, and Projection of a Skywalker. Well, that is an excellent pack. Uh, thank you very much for uh, this uh, this wonderful donation. I understand there's a checklist, so I'll have to try and get the checklist so I can start collecting some of these. Um, but, uh, yeah, this was a, an excellent surprise and very much appreciated. And uh, hats off to the Team Wales guys and all the wonderful foils that they uh, make for us and send over. Uh, all the OCS foils were made in the UK and shipped over here by Kevin, um, which is why Kevin was named the uh, 2018 Star Wars PC Volunteer of the Year. Uh, he'll be receiving an excellent trophy. We had it for him at the World Championships. Uh, Chris Menzel was going to present it to him. Uh, instead, Chris just did a quick announcement about all the wonderful work that Kevin has been doing for the Players Committee this year and he'll uh, have to give him the trophy some other point in time. Um, there's a little bit of that on Facebook, on the Facebook page as well. Um, that is, you can certainly uh, check out there. So um, thank you very much, Kevin, for all your hard work. It's, uh, it's very much appreciated this year. And uh, you know, hopefully you got uh, my bonus that I sent you as well um, for all your hard work and... Uh, putting in the time and the effort on doing that. Um, hey, Queso's in the chat. Hi, Queso. And, oh, Queso's making bit donations. Yay! Um, so, yeah, the other thing, too, is obviously if you haven't uh, subscribed yet to the Twitch channel, you see that little subscribe button that's right above the window? 
Uh, you can go ahead and hit that, especially if you have an Amazon Prime account, which you then link to Twitch and create a Twitch Prime account, uh, which then gives you one free subscription. So if you assign that to the Players Committee, then they start getting some little ad revenue and things like that that will help uh, bring in more money for the Players Committee and uh, let us keep doing all these awesome events. Um, you know, next up on the calendar in terms of uh, real life events, we've got the Seattle Grand Prix in January, uh, or the Endor Grand Prix, which will take place in Seattle in January. Um, and then after that will be the Match Play Championship in uh, April. That'll be back in New Jersey at our usual venue in New Brunswick. Um, I don't know if there's I think certainly probably something coming up on the European calendar as well. Um, I believe they have a one of their nationals event will be hosted pretty soon. I think it's like the UK nationals or uh, English nationals or something like that's coming up pretty soon too. So hopefully uh, that'll give to keep the European players something to keep busy through the winter. And then of course we have the OCS championships. Uh, we're in our top 16 cut now. We've got the playoffs coming. Um, that's what I wanted to do is I wanted to pull up the standings on that real fast. So bear with me for just a second while I work my way over. Yeah, I've got lots of notifications and messages. Cumulative standings. I had this up earlier because I was doing this to pull up the list. So we've got our top 16. You can see them across the top here. Uh, certainly some very interesting uh, options and choices and based on how some people have performed in the last couple of weeks, I don't really think there are really too many easy, uh, any really easy options here. Um, you know, so it'll be very interesting to see uh, who these top guys pick. I mean, you know, Joe Olson's got the first pick, uh, followed by Casey, and then our reigning world champion, Bastion Winklehouse. Uh, congrats, Bastion, on winning Worlds this week. Um, amazing, amazing performance. And, uh, you know, right down here, number seven, Wise, uh, he was in the the set, he was in the finals with Bastion. Um, Mr. Yellow was top four, so uh, you've got three of the top four world's finalists. Uh. Yeah, to answer the question, do we have? We'll be having a big nationals event in the U.S. Yes, we'll have, be having U.S. nationals uh, next summer since Worlds, especially because Worlds will be in uh, Europe next year. Uh, we will be having a big U.S. nationals event. City is still to be determined. Uh, last year it was in Atlanta. Uh, pretty good time, pretty good turnout there. We had about 30, 32 players. Um, so we'll be seeing whether or not we do that again. I'm doing game reviews in a minute, Shadzar. You can simmer down. <laughs> we normally do game reviews, but yeah, we start off with a little bit of other recap stuff too. So we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, so we've got the OCS coming up. These obviously guys are going to pick in the next week or two. We'll have a selection show for that. Uh, and then those matches will be streamed. We will have commentary for those as well. So you have more live streaming opportunities uh, with all that. And... Uh, try and get those matchups. And then there's another special event that's in the works that uh, I think people are going to be really excited about that hopefully will fill that little void for January before when next season's OCS would start up in February and when this one should end by the end of the year. So we're working on the details of that, and as that fleshes out, um, we'll be sure and pass that along to you guys. Um, but we are going to take a look at a game here uh, since a lot of the world streaming was... done uh, regarding uh, Black Sun <laughs> decks and Throne Room decks. I tried to find a game that completely avoided those, and uh, this link was submitted to me a couple weeks ago by CRG. Uh, he's playing uh, Dark Side Combat, a deck we don't see too often, and he's playing against a Light Side Senate deck. So it was a nice little throwback to like 2001, 2002, uh, when these decks were the most popular and certainly at all the top tables. Um, but what we'll uh, see here, obviously these are, have been updated with 15 years of virtual cards, so I'm sure these will look a lot different. Uh, highlight a few of the cards here. So CRG started the objective, which gives you these two locations. Um, Deep Hatred would let you stack. 
Yeah, can we see in a Black Sun throne room? Measure? No, no more, no more Black Sun throne room, Queso. I think you streamed like four of those games on Saturday and probably one or two more on Sunday. Um, and that's another thing hopefully we'll be seeing in the next week or two is some type of revision to, uh, to Shadows of the Empire to tone that down just, not, just a notch, just a touch. Just give it you know one less awesome thing that Black Sun can do that should hopefully at least make that not such an obvious top dark side deck. Um, but it would be very interesting to see when the deck lists are also scanned and posted this week what uh, the final counts are in terms of deck counts and deck types. But So virtual cards starting here, they will be no match for you. This is a pretty cool card that lets Maul kind of move around a little bit. Uh, you get Maul's lightsaber, start of opponent's control phase, may relocate Maul to same site as a Jedi. So during their turn, you can move Maul uh, in front of them, which you know could let you play something like Disarmed, uh, or could let them, you know, play something like Sorry About the Mess to kill you or just battle and beat the crap out of you. Um, but it also sets up some different dueling aspects as well. I think Maul Strikes would let you initiate a duel then, which you could try and do. Uh, and it's at the start of their control phase, so before they can force drain you, you could move Maul in front of them to block the drain. Um, so certainly a lot of uh, different options that this card features uh, or opens that gives you access to. Uh, and then you can place this effect out of play to deploy Maul's lightsaber from Lost Pile. So it lets you get it out of your deck, and then if Maul dies and you redeploy him, you can pitch the effect to get his lightsaber a second time. So you don't need to run as many copies of the lightsaber. You can probably get away with just one by starting that. Uh, and then you've got I Am Your Father, which is the Super Vader helper effect, which kind of does the same thing. It lets you get his lightsaber out of your deck or lets you deploy it back from your Lost Pile. It also gives you the added bonus that uh, when Vader hits somebody, with his weapon, they lose a force. And uh, established control for the third effect pulls the system. So it looks like he is running some space here. Uh, we do see at least Boba Fett, probably you'll see a Zuckus um, as well. And maybe one other ship, just a token space package, something to get around uh, battle order for a couple of turns. Typically, the uh, combat decks. You know, you're, you're trying to, you're, all your cards are very expensive. Your mains, they all cost six, seven, fours apiece. And if you have to pay three to drain on top of it, and then one or two possibly to move your guys around, um, that doesn't really leave you with a whole lot of cards left to draw. So sometimes they will try and at least get a token space package together just to try and satisfy battle order for a couple of turns uh, in the middle part of the game. And, uh, or even just at the limit, keep their opponent honest. It's also nice to have guaranteed extra activation uh, but this deck does give up a ton of icons. I mean, you're starting a 3-2 and a 2-2 site, which is one of the reasons why you don't see it played as often. The starting activation ratio is just not great anymore. And giving your opponent four force, especially against the deck like Throne Room or something that goes first, and it's like, hey, you know, I just gave you four icons plus whatever you're going to give yourself, and you get to go first. It's it's uh, It can be rough to try and dig out of you know a first turn, Luke with lightsaber right here to the 2-3. And if, say, the only Dark Jedi you have in your hand is the Emperor, who can't go there anyway, um, you're looking at a drain of 4 pretty quickly. So that's one of the reasons Dark Combat uh, has fallen out of play in the top spots. Um, still a viable deck. You know, uh, Pete Shardosky did pretty well with his version at uh, U.S. Nationals this year, making it all the way to the top 4. Uh, he was playing a slightly different version with a lot of Aura Sings blasters, so he was just blind drawn sevens, and I don't know if he had the blaster effect too to make them nines, but um, you know, certainly a different way of running it. Uh, as opponent, light side Senate, starting to draw their fire. Usually, you'll see something like this in a Senate deck. Usually, it's the combo battle order, draw their battle plan, draw their fire, just to slow the game down and save the shield pull. Uh, but regular draw their fire works pretty well, especially with. Uh, uh, EPP hit and run, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you're using Palpatine, Senator Palpatine. Uh, when your opponent draws Battle Destiny, you can spend a force to add that number to your total power. So you kind of basically offset their destiny. So, you know, they draw five and you use it and you get five to your power. So your EPP OB is now power 10 uh, plus your own Battle Destiny. And then if you can avoid him getting hit and keep his forfeit, around uh, one character can cover quite a bit of ground and uh, and do a lot of damage. Like my father's the pretty standard Luke effect. 
Uh, and then Walkling. Walkling is pretty common in these decks because it typically gets um, the Senate Hover Cam, which you put on the Senate, so they get extra activation. Um, like my father's not one you normally see in Senate. Usually you'll see like Strike Planning instead, so they can pull Mon Mothma right away. Um, but you can, you know, you can run four or five copies of Might of the Republic and try and get around that as well. You like pod racing combat for dark side. Pod racing in combat was always the thing. Uh, certainly adds an extra retrieval aspect. So if you do suffer any early damage, plus you're running all those high destiny cards to begin with. Um, so you can get through a pod race in just a couple turns. You know, especially with uh, if you're playing... <laughs> Oops. I'm sure he'll move. Um, for Lum. Uh, character, Non-Republic characters, their game text is canceled at the Senate. That's on the objective. So if you need a place to put Forlum where he's safe, you put him here, his game text was canceled, he had to move him over to the Jedi Council Chamber. Doesn't give him presence or anything there, he can't force drain there, but it's someplace safe he can put Forlum where he won't be battled, because uh, it looks like he doesn't have any of his location pullers, or maybe he doesn't run any extra locations. Um, usually you'll see him run like a bridge or something else. Uh, we got a Vader's Obsession, so he can do some dueling as well. That's interesting. Yeah, so that's one of the things that this Deep Hatred card lets you stack a card face down during your deploy phase on your Dark Jedi, which they can then use uh, for, as combat cards, but they can also use them for dueling. Uh, you can have more than two cards. Instead of drawing lightsaber combat destiny or dual destiny, your participant in character can use one of his combat cards. So, uh, oh, circle two. Wow, he's going all out with the dueling. Um, so certainly... Uh, you know, pretty, I wonder if he's got Epic Duel floating around in here somewhere. Uh, you can try and cross over Vader. Uh, Vader can try and cross Luke and uh, cause a lot of force overflow that way and, you know, put Obi out of play. Or maybe sometimes you just want to just take out their Jedi. If you can circle Obi, that puts him out of play. That would get him out of uh, circulation pretty quick, which would help. Uh, dark side stay being able to drain. That's one of the restrictions on the objective is why you're on this side. Opponent can't force drain where they have a Jedi. So, so it kind of forces them to come interact with you on Naboo. But when they do, your objective flips. And when you're here on the back side of the objective, you can't force drain or initiate battle. So all you can do is try and duel them or combat them to try and get them off your locations. Um, so it really, it really forces the interaction very narrow, very focused. Uh, fights over these Naboo sites typically. And uh, that can certainly... Uh, leads to some very interactive games, which is what Decipher had in mind when they were designing the cards, uh, but they did it in such a heavy-handed way that uh, it kind of uh, imbalanced things greatly. But Oh, got Chandrilla in hand. That's a lucky pull for uh, for the Senate player here, for totally JK. Usually you have to put Mom Mothma out. Mothma will pull Chandrilla for you, so to give you some extra activation, but he got Mothma in hand, or he might have used Might to get her and there's Senator Palpatine. Uh, typically, that's what you'll see what Senate decks do, is they use Strike Planning to get Mothma, they use three or four copies of Might, and they'll use Might to pull uh, a second Senator. Uh, hopefully, Senator Palpatine, because like I said, he's got that amazing game text. If opponent just drew Battle Destiny, use one force to add its destiny number to your total power. It says you may not cancel that draw after that, but it doesn't say you can't reduce it. So, if you... Uh, have something else to modify their destiny draw, whatever, after you add it. You just gotta do things in the right order. Uh, now that the Senate objective is flipped, it does have, uh, lets you go get political effects. There are five light side political effects, including this virtual one, which he's about to deploy. No center here. Place the center from hand to draw two cards from top of reserve deck. So that's pretty awesome. Helps you cycle through your deck pretty well. Uh, if an order or rebellion gender uh, agenda here, once during your draw phase, you can place all cards on your political effects in used pile. Normally you have to spend force to do that at the end of your turn. You have to use two at the end of your turn to put them all in. So if you have the right agenda there, which isn't always the easiest thing to match up, uh, you can do it for free. So you can save a little force by doing that as well. 
That's a cool little bonus. Usually people just do it for the card draw, and they'll do things because you can deploy senators from from effects as if from hand. So you'll play the effect, you'll stack a guy there, you'll draw two cards, then you'll deploy the guy you just stacked, and then you'll stack another guy and draw two cards, and you'll kind of just try and keep doing the same thing over. It's one of the benefits of having this defensive shield for dark side is that they can suspend it uh, once per turn, even at start of turn, target a political effect. It is suspended for the remainder of turn. And I believe you assume too much has the right icon. Yes, it does. So you can go ahead and suspend that. Oh, yeah, full screen mode. Thank you, Queso. I always forget to do that part. That's a pretty good hand for Totally JK. He got his hover cam already, too. Doesn't even need to waste his uh, walkling pull on that. Usually it costs three force to get this out. Uh, this adds three to your force generation at the Senate while you have um, a Senate majority. So unless you're playing against Dark Side Senate and they've got more guys there than you do, uh, you'll typically be generating quite a bit of extra force there. And you see just how quickly they jumped out to 16. Uh, he did not suspend the political effect. And as we were just talking about, uh, JK stacks Yerua on there, gets to draw two cards. And now next turn he'll deploy Yerua off there and stack another guy. Uh, and just kind of keep looping stuff around like that. As the dark side player, you're kind of wanting to get your Jedi, your Dark Jedi down here, um, usually to the 3-2, because of the other benefit of the text on this one, the site, uh, he's going to get the saber. Uh, any character's ability less than 5 about to be hit are placed in owner's use pile. So if they try and come at you with Chewie, Ray, Lando, those kinds of characters, Padme, uh, you can hit them, send them to the use pile immediately, and getting them out of the battle, uh, so that way you can you know, uh, stabilize a little bit more. It might mess them up from being able to draw Battle Destiny. Um, might prevent them from firing a weapon. You know, if Luke swings and misses and or gets force fielded or something, and then you hit Chewie or you hit Lando so they don't get the second Battle Destiny, uh, that can work pretty well. Looks like JK's playing a bunch of political effects. Uh, the objective lets you take him into hand once per turn, so he might be running... Uh, looks like he's running more than just... That one. Typically, if you're going to see a few, usually they run the ones that add and subtract from battle destinies. This is the one that subtracts three from a battle destiny. This is the one that adds three to a battle destiny. Um, usually, in, in the builds, if you're going to run political effects, you'll run these three. Um, looks like he may, in fact, be going... He's got four out now. This is the one that adds to a force drain. I don't know if he's got the fifth one as well, which cancels a force drain but uh, it can kind of water your deck down a little bit. And here we're going to see Qui-Gon come down. So he hasn't... Uh, and we put Launch in the Assault out as well. He didn't use Launch in the Assault, so I guess maybe his home one is not floating or whatever... Yeah, so I wouldn't be floating in his deck. If you would, you'd want to get that out right away so you don't draw one for battle or weapon destiny. Um, withdraw their fire out. Whenever a battle is initiated, player initiating retrieves a force, and the other, uh, the opponent loses a force. Um, but during a battle, you initiate. Each time an opponent plays an interrupt, they have to first use a force. So all these wonderful interrupts in his hand, um, in this particular case, Sith Fury or Gick, would be the only ones that might be applicable. Um he'd have to spend a force to play them, so he only has one force available. So he's kind of going to have to figure out which one's more important to him. And to be honest, it might be the Gick in this battle. Because um, if Qui-Gon's going to hit... If Qui-Gon can hit Vader. If he doesn't hit Vader, then he's probably okay. But if Qui-Gon misses... If Qui-Gon hits Vader, um, then Darkseid is definitely taking Overflow. Because whatever Darkseid draws for their battle destiny, Lightside will use Palpatine and add it to their power, so that's you know, negates it, basically. Um, and then Lightside gets their own battle destiny, and of course all of their senators 
are destiny plus two or plus three if they have the right agendas. So, you know, order agenda, he becomes the six. Taxation agenda, so he would just be a four, but. Oops. So let's see what happens here. So he, he, he very well could need that kick as opposed to Sith Fury to redraw. Oh, it's also Battle or Weapon Destiny. So that's a four. That's not a two. So there's a four and a five. That's nine. That Vader is now hit four foot zero. So dark side definitely might need the gick in this situation. They'll swing back. Might be able to cause a little force loss. There's force field. That'd been a card that the I'm sure they would have loved to have to avoid that weapon swing. So they got eight. Does dark side decides I have like a Wisa or something to subtract one? Nope. All right, so Qui-Gon's hit too. Uh, so that will cause a force loss from I Am Your Father. So that's uh, at least somewhat beneficial. And they top deck Poe. Um, can't choke him because there's no eights in the deck. And they draw their last political effect, which they will modify by stacking a senator to add six to the battle destiny. And he's going to take it into hand using Mothma, because he can. Uh, his, his objective would pull at the start of his turn anyway. Dark side draws a three. They'll use Palpatine to add three to their power to offset the draw. And then because it just says you can't cancel it, doesn't say you can't modify it. If he had another senator, he could stack a senator and subtract three from it and basically make it a zero. So that can really uh, swing battles one way or the other pretty quickly. Um, interesting interaction here, though, um, when the objective, when the dark side objective f f is on the seven side, when it flips back, you retrieve a force if the opponent has no Jedi at an interior Naboo battleground. So since light side initiated the battle, they have to forfeit first. So they forfeit Qui-Gon, and there's a temporary window right there where the automatic action happens and the objective flips back to the zero side, thus allowing dark side to retrieve a force before they have to lose Vader and his lightsaber. So they get a card back as well. Uh, there's no secret plans or uh, aim high shield out that would have prevented that. Or at least... Yeah. It's tough when you're trying to figure out. I guess, uh, yeah, CRG's in the chat right now, and he's just kind of talking about not canceling one of his effects. It's kind of a hard situation here either way, because if you... If you cancel the one that lets him add three to his destiny, then he just uses that guy to then subtract three from yours. So there's really no right answer there. Um, your guy's already hit. If your guy hadn't been hit and you were thinking about keeping his immunity to attrition, um, then maybe it would make sense to try and cancel the add. In case he did draw low, you couldn't add and crack your immunity. Um, but between just the power difference as well, you would have to have an appeal a bunch of cards. So not much uh, different you can do about that. But now, you know, Dark Side still has six battle damage that they have to take. They save the force, luckily, so they can play their Gick. It'll probably get grabbed. And rightfully so, in this type of beatdown deck, you don't want them retrieving it. You don't want them getting it back. You're going to grab that Gick. And you're just going to keep uh, sending guy after guy trying to take out uh, dark side or light side. Yeah, you're trying to take out dark side characters. So he just shuffled his deck, trying to. He has four political effects out, so I guess he just revealed his deck to his opponent um, for no reason. Uh, a little mini mistake there. He's got a masterful move. The only thing he can get uh, in 
this case is the six. Um, for dark side, that's typically what they want to do. Just try and get if you're going to do if you're going to be able to pull off some combats uh, with this type of deck, you you know you can use uh, masterful move combo, which will let you get holograms like Image of the Dark Lord, like the Phantom Menace that you can put down for. He's going to image on the Senate to keep him from draining at the non-battleground. I had to save that personally. I had to save that for a different location, a better location. Um, you know, it's not a battleground. If you ha you already have the coward shield out, so if you can get to a battleground of your own, chances are it's gonna be tough tough for them to cover too. Um, in which case they wouldn't be able to drain there anyway. So I had to save the image of the Dark Lord for uh, a better spot, potentially even one of your own sites, um, to keep them from draining for a larger amount, especially if you've got, if they keep moving away from you and you might have to be able to chase with Vader or something, so. Han Chewie Falcon comes down to Fondor, that for, just for card economy, that's usually one of the ships you'll see in a light side Senate deck. Um, the fact that it also draws two Battle Destiny by itself is pretty, uh, pretty stellar. Um, very vulnerable to Zuckus, but with Palpatine out and the fact that the ship's immune to less than six, Zuckus really isn't much of a threat to it. It's uh, it's power nine, and whenever Dark Side draws for Destiny, Palpatine's going to add to offset. So as long as they draw less than six, the ship's going to be immune, and Zuckus is still going to end up taking overflow probably. Because even if, if you can only put one pilot on it, so best you can get it to is like six or seven power. Um, so you're still behind. You're still losing end up losing the battle um, and you don't really accomplish much unless you you know have that six to crack their immunity in that case you'd want to suspend the political effect that subtracts wherever it is this one subtracts three from the battle destiny to make sure they can't subtract from your draw to prevent you from cracking their immunity um, it's one of the reasons that this deck was shielded because it does so many obnoxious things that uh It's just going to be tough for them to uh, to do. Cold feet to get another shield. Yeah. They're going to get the saber out. I'm not seeing any Imperial barriers in this deck as we've gone through the list. Maybe they're in the force pile and we just missed it. But, uh, you know, typically for this type of dark side build, you'll see a number of evasion type cards. Um... I don't like putting Dr. E down like that right there. Well, actually, that's not so bad. Light Side's going to drop, and they're, I mean, they're going to hit him, and he's just going to go used before Dark Side gets a chance to swing. But uh, I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, obviously, you've got the disarmed. But what you're looking for there, what I'd be looking for would be barriers. So when they deploy the guy, you can barrier them to keep them from battling you, which then gives you the ability to set up your combats. Um, something like Stunning Leader would also be helpful to uh, to cancel the battle. So that way, you know, your characters get to live and there's still guys on the table to do things like combat or disarmed or dueling. Um, and I haven't seen any of those battle cancel evasion type cards yet. But usually we think of Dr. E coming down like after the guy's been disarmed, but I think he actually says just. I think that's what we just saw. I know it's just hit, but oh, it is also just disarmed. Uh, okay. There's a stunning leader. Okay. All right. Dark side's in business here. They've got some, some options here now. Second disarmed. If you can stunning leader the battle and then disarm behind it, um, obviously, there is a shield that will hurt there. Totally JK tried to drain it to send it, which was canceled by Community Big Coward, so didn't need the image of the Dark Lord there, as we talked about earlier. Looks like he's going to revert back. Oh, he let him take it back, because he tried to put cards from his hand down, 
But this the other thing with the shield does is it while well, you have twelve or fewer cards in hand, the opponent can't remove them. All right, Qui Gon's back for battle number two. Now they're going to stack a senator and draw two cards. He cancels the political fact that lets him add to his next four strain for this turn. That one I would not have done either, because again, as we mentioned earlier, this is the only place he can drain, which gets canceled by Coward. Uh, so mini mistake there. Um, and we're possibly going to see him cycle through most of his deck and get a lot of his Senators out. He's up to five. Uh, Qui-Gon also adds a Battle Destiny with Maul, so this could go, could have gone horribly. Uh, Stunning Leader should hopefully help out, but there are cancelers for it, so I guess we'll find out if totally JK is running any of those. I'm an idiot. You're right. I'm sorry I didn't see it over here. I'm, I'm focused on this. I didn't realize Han was out there at the system. You're right. Long weekend. I apologize. I'm tired. I missed that one. Impressive cancels the stunning leader. Ah. Now he gets to swing away. So like we said, he'll go after Dr. E to try and make sure that he stays around long enough to complete the battle, that Qui-Gon does anyway. Uh, so Dr. E's going to get hit, and he's going to go used because of the text on the site. Uh, so then it's just Maul and Qui-Gon. Now we got Maul Strikes here, which can be used to add to Battle Destiny, which could come in handy. Uh, he could also try and duel. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and try and duel him just to get out of the battle altogether. This is a good strategy. Uh, <laughs> Jedi's Concentration. Wow. All right. Looks like we're going to peel four cards here. Looks like JK's kind of got all the answers here so far. So he's going to use the card he has stacked, which was the Phantom Menace. So that's a good start. He's up to he's at seven already, so uh, he should be ahead. And depending on what he draws for his second destiny, and if it's a character, he can Sith Fury it. So uh, he's actually kind of probably got two chances at a decent destiny here. And then he blind draws a second Phantom Menace, giving him a total of fourteen. And there's a one. So he's definitely going to win the duel, and Qui Gon's going to be lost here. I don't think it causes any additional force loss or anything. I think it just gets him off the table. Lowest total is lost. Yeah, okay. So Qui-Gon will go away immediately, thus ending the battle, which will allow Maul to stick around and uh, get a force strain of his own in. And force strains on Naboo sites can't be cancelled, where you have a dark Jedi. So he can't use this political effect to cancel that drain, and Maul can add to it with the saber. Uh, so this could be a pretty quick drain of four. So that's a, a very good turn of things uh, for the dark side here. They also get to retrieve a force because they flip the objective back uh, by killing Qui-Gon. So really they only lost three to that duel. Well, plus the Maul strikes, but um, you know, obviously that gets things a little better. And now he'll get to suspend the political effect. And he chooses to suspend the one that would cancel the force drain. All right, well, uh, unfortunately, as we just mentioned, he can't cancel the drain there anyway because of the objective. So, he's going to add two. He's going to lose a card. And that's a quick drain of four. And uh, with Totally JK, putting a lot of cards on the table already between all the political effects and the Senators, uh, that's a pretty decent uh, chunk of his deck that he just lost there to that drain. And now if you know, light side or Dark Side can kind of back Maul up with a second character, which they've gone ahead and done now, uh, putting Mara out. And then reload with a couple of cards, hopefully finding another evasion type card. 
uh, whether it be another stunning leader or a barrier or something, they could be uh, in a pretty good position. He's going to suspend the uh, Destiny Adder effect again, preventing or uh, Force Drain Adder, preventing Han Chewie from making that a drain of three in space. It's good. It slows the pace of the game. That's fine. Checks his reserve deck. Some decent destinies in there, but uh, he's going to pay three and drain one at Fondor, causing one force loss. Normally, Yarua will let you retrieve a force when you initiate a drain at a battleground system, but uh, the Coward Shield also stops that. All right, and here comes a Jedi Luke. He's going to put Walkling out of play to try and retrieve a force. He's got two battlegrounds now, so he can do that. So he can get his lightsaber back. But that won't help him this turn unless he's got Ray. If he's got Ray, he can deploy Ray and take the saber from his used pile, which uh, could be handy. Nope, he's going to battle without it. He'll retrieve another force. He'll cause a force loss with draw their fire. So he's, he's swinging trying to swing the, the pendulum of the force here a little bit in his favor. Maul's going to get a swing at Luke. We expect Luke to be hit here. And we already saw JK lose a Hujix earlier, so we'll see if he's got a second one handy. He's going to Sith Fury that, get the one out of the deck, that's good. Uh, make sure he hits, because he would have missed otherwise, or at least try to make sure he hits. Get a second crack at it. And there's another four, so that'll do it. Luke will be hit and forfeit zero. Um, so there potentially could be some overflow here for Dark Side. It's going to depend on what JK's got in his hand, in terms of whether he's got any Senators to add or manipulate Destiny draws. He's going to swing again. Interesting. I don't know if he's just trying to move some destiny around or just trying to get a better look at a few cards and see like what he's got stacked together. He, acti he can activate most of the way to this pile of cards. And there's an unfortunate one uh, sitting down there. Oh, and he draws Akbar. He's going to stack a center to add three and take Akbar into hand. So that'll make the destiny of five. So it's going to mitigate some of the force loss here. And then he'll use Palpatine, I'm sure, to whatever. Yeah. So he gets lucky there that uh, he had a center to add to his own, and he was able to offset some of that force loss. But uh, it'll be Luke in a card. And uh, Mara's going to have to go. So, you know, a battle that did not really uh, look like very, a very good one for light side on paper, Maul with lightsaber and Mara against an unarmed Luke. But Mara died, and... Light side retrieved two force in the process between Walkling and Draw Their Fire, and uh, Dark Side lost Luke, or uh, lost Mara, rather. Suspends the effect, the drain canceller again. He'll lose a force. To make another drain of four, which is really going to burn through light side cards 
you know, light side's gonna it's gonna get expensive for light side, especially paying that three upkeep a turn on the Falcon. Um, and if they have to pay to drain as well and pay to deploy, they're getting to the point where they're running really low on resources. And now that we've seen Home One and Akbar go, uh, Dark Side smartly commits their Boba Fett to Chandrilla uh, to try and get around having to pay to drain themselves. Uh, they draw into a couple cards and pick up those double sevens again, which they can use for Lom to kind of cycle back into their deck. And he'll go ahead and suspend the drain bonus uh, political effect. Uh, pretty good destiny there other than that EPP Obi. But like we said, JK is running out of force to do stuff with. Hey, there's Ray. Ray should hopefully get him another character. That's another Jedi Luke. But we know the lightsaber's not in there. Sixth Senator. Can't use Might just yet either because he doesn't have enough force because of secret plans. Uh, Might of the Republic would let him retrieve one for each senator, but it would, it's already grabbed, so it would cost him two to stack it and then six more to retrieve. And he's got to occupy two battlegrounds in order to retrieve. Um, so that's going to be a card that's going to be difficult to pull off uh, for JK in this type of situation. Oh, we got an assist fury there for that Dooku. And he will go ahead and spend the one force on it. Try to make sure he hits Luke. Oof. Charles and Maul right behind it. Well, he'll miss the first time, but the second swing should hit. Those destinies should be a little bit better. There we go. So there's the eight. That'll hit Luke, make him forfeit zero, guarantee that Luke leaves the table, and... Now that uh, Darkseid has two battlegrounds, they could retrieve, but aim highs out, so they don't have any force left. But now we're going to see. Light side draws a six. And they're going to add three to it to make it a nine. We'll see if they have any other senators left to possibly. I mean, Maul's going to die anyway from. The, he's only immune to. He's immune to less than six. He would have died anyway, but. Unfortunately, draws a one here. Does not get any overflow out of that, though. It still would have been even. They flip back, but they don't have any force to retrieve. So now Maul's going to be lost. But what does that mean for Ray? <laughs> As we look at Darkseid's hand, then we see this nice uh, plethora of characters. And a second Maul Saber and the ability to pitch this effect if necessary to get a Saber from the Lost Pile. Um, we could easily see Maul going after Ray or something. He suspends the one that stops him from canceling a force drain, but he doesn't have any care. Uh, he's got Boba Fett. He's gonna drain. For, he's gonna pay three to drain for one. In this situation, I would not do that. I would be deploying characters, especially with him not having any force saved to and no cards, two cards in hand, to use on uh, Senator Palpatine.
I would have, instead of draining for one here, I would have squeezed two characters out and gone after Ray. It could have afforded uh, Kylo and P-59 and battled. And uh, possibly done a lot more damage. She's going to be hit. She's going to be forfeit zero. They don't have the ability to do that, but they do have Liana here. Target opponent's just drawn destiny. Opponent must use or lose two force, or that battle destiny is going to equal zero. Well, I draw one there. Yeah, I'd probably just let that get reset to zero as well. Unfortunately, that's going to mean that probably not going to cause any overflow uh, to Ray. Now, definitely not now that they uh, drew a five. But uh, if there was a second character there, like say P fifty nine or Asajj Ventress, I would have had more power and could have caused some more overflow. Probably also would have may have if you had put P fifty nine there and taken a shot at her to try and lose two, make him lose two. That would have got burned that one and gotten a better second destiny uh, potentially there. Uh, and then you just lose two with Liana if necessary to make sure you get to keep that destiny. Um, with only a couple cards in hand and a Hujix already in the lost pile, um, it's unlikely that he would have had a second one there and could have uh, caused some damage. Gonna foil on back the lightsaber. He activates, he deploys to get his second battleground. He's now he's got the eight force. So he pays the two for might to stack it. He can pay the six with secret plans to retrieve for each of his senators at the uh, Galactic Senate. He won't have any force left to save Lando. Lando's gonna have to go leave the table. Uh, he does retrieve some force and get himself back into this game. He's going to get back a couple of characters. Ray, Yoda, there's a Jedi Luke right there. So he gets back a few characters here. Um, still going to take him another turn or so to activate and kind of draw back into those guys. Um, he's also going to lose his Falcon because he doesn't have any force left to pay maintenance for that either. So uh, a rough sequence of, of events here uh, for... JK as he has to lose pretty much all of his board presence in order to retrieve six cards and prolong the game a little bit more. But I definitely would activate all 12 here. Now that you're not doing a whole lot, now I'd pay to drain for one just to do something uh, before deploying, you know, Maul and uh, pulling that saber. That to me makes a little bit more sense this turn. Take the drain of one, redeploy them all, pull the lightsaber out of the deck because you cycled it back with four lom, and you get a peek. You got one, four, six in there, and you can redraw the four because the Sith Fury's in hand. So basically, your top cards are going to be in any particular order. It's going to be going to be four, six. Um, yeah, and J.K. is going to go ahead and concede at this point because he's going to have to activate and then draw to get all his characters. Um, he's going to not be able to cancel the drain, so he's going to get drained for five, and then that's not going to leave him very much force to redeploy anything. Um, so he's just going to end up falling way too far behind in this game, and clearly his strategy of, uh, of hit-and-run attacks uh, is not exactly working or paying off. Um, usually that's why we'll see, instead of like my father, we'll see EPP Lukes and Obi because they're just more card efficient uh, in terms of the hit-and-running. I mean, having Destiny 6 Lukes is great, but uh, you know, once, Luke, once that first Luke loses the, the lightsaber, 
uh, he's not quite as uh, menacing as uh, an EPP would. And the other benefit too of EPP Luke is he's only ability 5. Uh, same thing with EPP Ray. So they don't count as Jedi, so they don't flip the objective and let Dark Side retrieve and things like that. And if you want to, um, you can deploy them elsewhere and force drain because it's only Jedi that have the restrictions. So slight benefit there. Um, and then I did not see, maybe they went by or maybe just didn't draw them, um, but that would also leave you probably a little bit more, uh, another card slot or two to squeeze in a Jedi's Resilience, which lets you take your lightsaber characters back into hand. Maybe they're in there and they just didn't come up yet. There's a few cards that we haven't seen. But uh, a good win for CRG. Uh, he was able to, just through battle damage and manipulation, just um, keep his characters coming back um, while light side kind of burned through theirs and uh, you know kind of pewtered out. They started off pretty fast and strong with uh, you know some strong characters and getting the Falcon and stuff out. But at the end of the day, uh, this particular light side build just starts to get too expensive, and as they get low on force, they start having to really make decisions um, about things like paying maintenance for your Falcon and trying to pay for Might of the Republic to retrieve and paying to drain and you know paying to put your senators back. Um, and it can just really add up into where you, you box yourself into a corner and have to make some bad decisions. So uh, thank you very much, uh, CRG, for submitting this game link to us. Um, we always appreciate that. If you have any game links, be sure and PM them to me on the forums. Username Gogolin. Uh, or, you know, post them in the comments or whatever. Uh, definitely appreciate that. And, uh, you know, like being able to continue to do these videos for everybody. Uh, we're only going to do one game review tonight because, like I said, I'm still very tired from Worlds. Uh, running on just about five hours of sleep a night for four straight days is, uh, you know, kind of catches up with you <laughs> a little bit. Um, especially when it wasn't even good sleep because I don't know what kind of toilets they had in this hotel, but they were the loudest gosh darn things I've ever heard. Uh, so much so that I could hear my neighbors flushing their toilets in their rooms at like four o'clock in the morning, which is what you always love getting woken up to. Um, so we're definitely going to get a nap in. Uh, call it an early night and uh, be back next week with uh, some more videos and uh, you know some more game links from people and hopefully we'll be talking about what's coming up with the OCS selection show and uh, hopefully I get to be a part of that because I would love to be a part of that uh, I love talking about all the different strategy behind picks and things like that I love the you know, NFL draft and all that kind of stuff so uh, thank you guys very much for, for tuning in and watching tonight. Uh, as always, we will be back next week. And uh, see you guys, same bat time, same bat channel. All right, have a great night. Thanks.